Tiki won her um, Olympic at, with 2.23.07 record at London. And she was born in Bo um, Bokaji, a town renowned for producing top runners. She began competing in road races in Ethiopia and came forth at the 2004 Great Ethiopian Run. She went to Spain in 2006 and made her debut over the half marathon distance. She won the San Silver Barcelona 10K, 10K race at the end of the year. She traveled to Japan in 2007 and won the 10K. And her time there was 31 minutes and 54. That made her the third fastest Ethiopian that year. And then she won the 2008 Woman First 5K in Addis Ababa in March. And then she came forth at the high profile World 10K in May. In late 2008, she took sixth place with a time of 1, 10, 22 hours. And then she came second place at the, um, at the American debut. Her marathon followed in October at the uh, marathon close finish. She took third place on the podium. In 2010, she came fourth at both Los Angeles Marathon and at the Dublin Marathon. And she did improve her best to 229.53 hours. And this year, in 2013, she's already defended her half marathon title. That is Tiki. The second person that we're highlighting today is Bethlehem Delahon Alamu, and she's an entrepreneur, and she um, founded the Soul Rebels um, shoe in Africa. And she's considered one of Africa's most successful people. Bethlehem Delahon was born and raised in Zendaburg, a small, impoverished rural community in Addis Ababa. And as a child, she discovered that people of her community were living in abject scroll because there were very few jobs available. While the most of the locals were unemployed, Bethlehem discovered that several of them possessed remarkable artisan skills which made, remain largely unexploited. By 2004, armed with startup capital sourced from her husband and members of her immediate family, Bethlehem mobilized artistically gifted members of her community and founded Soul Rebels which has become one of Africa's most recognizable footwear manufacturer. Today's shoes under the Soul Rebels brand are sold in over 30 countries around the world and through various e-commerce sites like Amazon.com. Soul Rebels has become a hugely successful, sustainable, truly world-class enterprise in it, and bringing in at least one million in annual revenue. One other person that we'd like to recognize today is Zaki Haile, and she has dedicated her life to empowering women. Zaki graduated from high school in 1970 in Addis Ababa, and then worked at the university for a few years, and then she decided to go for higher education to Europe. She came back and became a professor at Addis Ababa or Haile Selassie University until they were asked, um, they were, they um, were asked to leave their job. So. When she gave up her professor job, instead of leaving the country, she decided to stay there and start an, uh, an NGO. Sege was particularly concerned about the low status and poverty of women in Ethiopia. And so she wanted her new organization to focus on women. And through creating a credit savings scheme is how she decided to start this. Right now, um, because it became so successful and it has grown and it serves and it's called WISE, and it has given training for 23,000 poor women. And the training consists of entrepreneurship, business management, leadership, health, literacy, and, and life skills. This has also created 50 savings and credit cooperatives, as well as Central Union, with a total loan of over 65 million birr, and it has 12,800 active members. And mind you, these are women that are low income or considered poor. And the last person we would like to highlight is a journalist, um, and she is Bokta Imam. She was raised in Washington, D.C. area and received her education at the University of Maryland at College Park. Bokta was currently a reporter, she's currently a reporter at Fox 13 News in Memphis, Tennessee. With less than six years as a reporter and the youngest, 
She's received numerous awards. And the last one is an Emmy Award she received by the National Academy of TV, TV Arts and Science for Excellence in um, Continued Coverage category. And this coverage actually is um, where they're trying to keep convicted rapists to complete their sentencing. We'd like you to watch um, her acceptance speech at the January 2013 Oval Celebration. These nominees their stories for a longer period of time. The nominees for continuing coverage No Time Limit are Corruption and the Clerk, After the Fall, WSMV, County Clerk Fallout, WTVF, Felipe Montez Story, WUVC, Kimberly's Law, WHBQ, Three Angels Farms, WSMV, UCDD Fallout, WTVF. And the winner tonight is... Kimberly's Law. She just changed our state through her bravery. You know, it says a lot. I stand here today for the victims who don't have the courage to stand up against the justice system, for the victims who don't have the courage to stand up against their attacker. Wow, this is uh, so amazing. Thank you so much, and I'd also like to thank God for the positive energy you continue to send my way. I'd like to thank Fox 13, who continues to support my work. And I'd like to thank everyone who was involved in this compelling story and allowed myself and talented photographer Michael Moore to document a moment in their life. I believe that each one of us has a story, and my story begins with my parents, after they migrated from Ethiopia to America in the 1970s. They planned to attend college here and just return back to Ethiopia. But as we know, life rarely goes as planned. And some of the best stories that we share in journalism are stories of people who take an unexpected situation and make the most out of it, and then go on to help others. Turmoil in Ethiopia kept my parents here, and our home became a rock for dozens of family members who migrated from Ethiopia to America in hope of better opportunity. My parents' experience while working to achieve their own goals inspired me to do this kind of work, which I hope creates change, as Kimberly Morton, who really deserves credit here, did so with uh, a new law that will create change and keep aggravated rapists in prison for their full sentence. I'd like to thank everyone who has supported me, and I want to uh, just really just say thank you so much for this award. It means so much to me, and I really believe that this is the kind of work that we as journalists are meant to do, to create change, inspire people, and help people. Thanks again. But I'm Exodus Ali. Thank you so much. for preparing this wonderful presentation for us and sharing all these inspirational women with us today. Um, now we are at the Buddha ceremony. Coffee ceremony is an integral part of an Ethiopian woman's social and cultural life. An invitation for a coffee ceremony is considered a mark of friendship and respect. Performing the ceremony is almost obligatory in the presence of a visitor, no matter what time of day. But don't be in a hurry, because this special ceremony can last for a few hours. <laughs> yes, this coffee is certainly not instant. Bunna is a community building activity. Women gather together to discuss issues, to get and give advice and support each other. Wazero Burtukan Tekiste has prepared um, the coffee ceremony for us today, and we welcome you to come up and get some coffee and join us. Um, also, during this time, you are invited to walk around and view the art that we have um, on display. It's in the back left corner. Um, you are also invited to speak with the presenters during this time. Uh, additionally, we will be playing some Ethiopian music, so don't be shy come up and do a dance. The youth dance group showed you how to do it, so you can you know, um, do a little bit of what they're doing. Um, this ceremony will last about 15 minutes, and then we will begin the second half of our program with a trivia. Thank you.